Hi guys and welcome to this is our video on recursion with geometric sequences. My name is Dan from Askaru. Thanks very much for joining me. Hopefully you're about to find this video just blows your mind and it all makes perfect sense. But before I get into it, can you do me a favor? And as I normally say, subscribe on YouTube. It's huge for me when I actually get new subscribers. It's a little click from you. Turn off notifications if you want, but just by clicking that, it lets me know that people are actually watching and I'm not sitting in here uh, talking to myself, which I'm sure I'm going slowly mad. I'm on TikTok and Instagram and all those other things as well, if you can give me a follow. But um, look, let's get on with this. So our learning objectives. By the end of the lesson, what are we gonna want you to do to be able to to generate a geometric sequence using a recurrence relation. Now in a previous video, we looked what a geometric sequence was. I'll come back to that in a second. To be able to find the nth term of a geometric sequence using a recurrence relation. All right, so that's what we're gonna learn. If you remember from the previous part, we've done lots now on linear sequences, on arithmetic sequences, on sequences where basically they go in a straight line, where we effectively add on the same amount of value every single time. But that's not true in real life, sadly, and I'll get to a finance situation on that shortly or in another video. Actually, if you pay money into a bank account, you get interest, but you get interest on the interest and interest on the interest on the interest, and so it goes on. So actually, what you tend to find is that things tend to grow geometrically, and that is an example of geometric growth there. We found out that again, in the previous lesson, what did we have? We had that R, the little value of R, was given by my common, ratio. And what was a common ratio? It basically was the number that got multiplied every single time. So if I had 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, etc., then we know in that situation r would equal 10. Because it's basically becoming 10 times bigger. I don't put times 10, I just put 10. Right, so that is everything we've done so far. It's leading to the financial aspect in the next video, but let's just get some basics done now. We know for a geometric sequence, all right? So again, going back to my basics, I like coming back to my basics. If I wanted to find my term to term to term, T0 is given by some value of A, or it can be P or whatever else we want to call it. To get to my next term, I take my previous term and multiply it by some sort of multiplier, some sort of common ratio, okay? So that's really, really important. But as I've said before, <laughs> things get very interesting. Now, this R here is always a decimal number. I've actually said that in this section here. R is always a decimal number. I very rarely see it as a fraction. I don't think I've ever seen it as a fraction. And we'd need to go back to your percentages work about percentage uh, multipliers or, you know, when things go up by 10%. So for example, if you remember, when things go up by 10%, I like to think of it as, well, I started with 100. It's gone up by 10% which gives me 110% of what I started with. And we know that that there can be written as 110 divided by 100, which when I put that onto my calculator, gives me 1.1, so a 10% increase is a 1.1 multiplier. Okay, I'll do another example, rub this out, all right? You can write, you can copy down uh, my, or you can print out my, uh, what am I trying to say? You can get all of the slides that I'm writing on at the moment on MathsGuru by signing up. It's all free to sign up and you can download them under each of the videos. Let's do a 20% decrease. So a 20% decrease. Again, I always start with 100%. I'm decreasing, so I'm gonna take off 20%, which gives me 80% of what I started with. But I know that 80% is the same as 80 divided by 100, which one I put into my calculator gives me 0 0.8. So as I say here, a 20% decrease will give me an R value of 0 0.8. Now, I tend to be able to do this in my head. Life becomes um, easier in a moment because I'm gonna give you a formula, all right? But let's just go back to basic ideas of using a, recur a recurrence relation to generate a geometric sequence. So again, we now know here that T0 is my first term, T of n plus one at my next term, take my previous term, and times by two, so we're gonna double it. Generate the graph and find the first five terms of the sequence defined by that, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my first five terms. One, two, three, four, five. And if you remember, I do this just so I don't do too many or do too few. The first term is five. I am doubling, so that's gonna give me 10. Doubling again, give me 20. 
doubling again gives me 40 and doubling again gives me 80. Now that's done. Those are my five numbers. I now need to be able to draw my graph. And when I draw my graph, remember you have to do it in pencil. I probably talked about this in previous videos. If I haven't, then basically, <laughs> Please, please, please realize that you've got to do pencil and ruler. If you don't, the examiners will knock you marks off left, right, and center. And if for every graph you draw, you lose marks, your study score is going to just plummet. I promise you it'll plummet. But here we go. So what have we got? Um, this here is T0. That is T1, T2, T3, and T4. Now in that situation, the numbers I'm interested in are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, because they are the numbers I'm going to plot here, 0, one, two, three, and four. And what you notice is that the gaps between each of these things here are exactly the same. Now, if you're lucky in an exam, they'll actually print off uh, a sort of graph paper for you and you'll be able to draw it on there with all the grid lines. But please still make sure it's accurate. What is my highest number? It is 80. So in that situation, I would have to go up to 80. I go half, that's going to give me 40. Half of that gives me 60. Half of that gives me 20. Now my graph is never going to be accurate, but you would have to make yours accurate. So T0, so when N is zero, uh, I would plot five. So there is my first point at five. T1 is 10, I'm going to have it there. T2 is 20, I'm going to have it there. T3 is 40, it's going to go there. T4 is 80, it's going to go there. And what do you notice? It is a beautiful geometric curve. Now, it's important to note that I do not have any plus D on the end there. And this is going to be important a bit later on. You've just got to realize there that um, a geometric growth can only have a multiplier. There can't be anything else at the end of this equation there. If it's, that's the case, it is not geometric growth. But that's taught you through the general idea. And again, if I look now at the actual sort of graph from uh, the Cambridge textbook, and thank you very much, Cambridge, for letting me use your examples. Very, very grateful. We get this. And you'll notice their graph is a lot more accurate than my one because they've got a grid. But we are looking for something to slope up or things can actually also slope down. And that's going to be depreciation. Finding the nth term of a geometric sequence. Now, I've done this before for arithmetic sequences. We're going to do it again now for geometric sequences. But again, we're going to turn a recurrence relation, and that's a recurrence relation. It's got a T0. It's got my T of n plus 1 into a rule. Now, my rule here is my nth term is given by, and I think actually that is incorrect there. I'm going to correct that now to make that T0 uh, times r to the power of floaty n. Now r is my multiplier, so whatever this value is here, we're just going to raise it to a power. Why? Let's work it out. Let's work it out with a simple example first. So I've got t1, uh, t0 equals 1. So t0 is 1. t1, now how do we get to t1? I'm going to take my first number and times by 4. Okay, so that's going to be 1 times 4. t2, how do I get to t2? Well, you could turn around and say, well, it's 4 times 4, but I'm going to say it's 1, that's my start number, times by 4, times by 4. And you're going to say, you what? So let's go write my numbers down again. I've got my numbers 1, 4, 16, 64, 128. I'm just doing that in my head because to go from there to there and times by 4, to go from there to there and times by 4, to go to there and to there and times by 4. But if I want to go straight to there from 1 to 16, all I'm doing is timesing by 4 and then timesing by 4 again. To go from 1 to 64, I'm timesing by 4 and timesing by 4 and timesing by 4. So T3 is 1 times 4 times 4 times 4. And T4 will be 1 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And so it goes on. So can I come up? with the general rule of T of n. Well, I should Coco. First thing we notice is that he says not wanting to do that. Let's try that one again. First thing I notice is this number here is always the same and it was T0. So I know that that is going to be T0 is going to be in there. Now I've got it at the start at the moment. I'm going to move it over slightly uh, just so that we fit the formula that we're looking for. And what do we notice here? Well, we've got one times by four here. I've got 2 times by 4s. Here, I've got 3 times by 4s. 
here I've got four times by fours. And we know that in this situation, I can actually write this. That's gonna stay as one. That's gonna stay one as four to the power of one. This is one times four squared, because remember four squared is the same as four times four. There we go. This is gonna be equal to one times four cubed, one times four to the power of four. And again, if we notice the pattern, there's a one, there's a one. Floaty two, subscript two. Floaty three, subscript three. Floaty four, subscript four. Oh, so we've got this one, which is my T zero. I've got the subscript here, or sorry, the floaty number, which is the same as this thing here. So that's gotta be N. So we're gonna to have to have a floaty N. So we're gonna do times by floaty N. And what on earth is this four? Where did that four come from? Well, my value of R. So there we go. So that is how we know that T of M, sorry, is equal to R to the power of N times T zero. ka -ching. Now, obviously you can just write that in your summary book. The theory, if you weren't that interested in it, that's fine, don't worry about it. It's just, I, it's my party piece. I explained it in nightclubs that works. It's fine, don't worry about it. But let's do an example. Consider the following recurrence relation. T zero equals two. T of n plus one equals three times T of n. So that there is my common ratio. So I already know there that R is gonna be equal to three. And I know that T zero is equal to two. Find T12. So it wants me to find T12. Well, to be able to do that, I've either got to do two times three times three times three times three, times three which seems a bit tedious, or I can come up with a rule. And sometimes converting this to a rule makes a lot more sense. So I know that T of n is given by R, well, hold on, we know that, is three to the power of n times by T0. So if I wanted T to the power of, or T12, I'm gonna do three, to the power of 12. The reason being is that n and that n are the same. So if that becomes 12, that becomes 12. Times by t0, which I just get from the question. <laughs> now, I can't do that in my head, but what I can do is bring up my calculator. So let's see this one then. So I'm gonna do three to the power of 12, and I'm gonna multiply that by two, which is going to give me a massive one, oh, six, two, eight, eight, two. That is a fairly large number. But there we go, that's finding the nth term of our geometric sequence. And believe it or not, that's the end of this video, all right? It was just a gentle introduction to the stuff that's gonna come up, but hopefully it's been useful. My name's Darren from Masquerade, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. If you can subscribe, that would be great, uh, to my YouTube, my TikTok, and whatever else that's out there. It just lets me know, as I say, I'm watching. All right, see you again, take care. Please stay safe.